What's going on, Metagang? It's Red, and today I'm coming at you with my uh, Emancipator deck profile. So, starting off, we'll get into the Emancipator monsters. I play one Researcher because, you know, she's a real money card. But uh, if you control another rock monster, you just get to special summon her out, excavate 5, and then special summon a level 4 or lower non tuner rock monster. Continuing on. We play three Seeker. Uh, all the Emancipators are going to have the same excavating effect. But Seeker is, if you control an Emancipator monster, you just get the special summon him out from the hand. You know, pretty cool card to be running at three. Analyzer. If your opponent only controls a monster and you don't, you get to special summon this card from your hand. Same thing as the other two. Excavate five, special summon an all a rock monster. Uh, continuing on with the Emancipator lineup, we play two Leonite. Leonite, whenever it's special summoned by an Emancipator card effect, you get to take an Emancipator card from your... I think it's a card or is it a monster? Yeah, it's just one Emancipator card. So you can take one from your hand or graveyard and place it on the bottom of your deck. I play two Raptite. Raptite doing the same thing as Leonite. You know, you special summon it by Emancipator effect. And then you place one of the Emancipator cards from your hand or graveyard on the top or bottom of your deck. I play three Dragite. Uh, Dragite's a unique one. Personally, my favorite. Whenever it is special summoned by an Emancipator card effect, you just get to draw a card. Uh, continuing on with the rest of the monster lineup. Mandatory. Playing three Doki Doki. Being able to discard a rock monster from your hand to special summon one. Being the same level and element as the one you discard. I play one Power Giant just to be able to special summon it uh, from my hand by sending a level four one a level four monster from my hand to the graveyard, and then I decrease its level, which it also helps within the line of synchro plays and or if I'm going to link climb. Uh, one pri uh, primineal, primineral whatever congrate. So, uh, this deck is kind of vulnerable to hand traps in a, in a sense. It just depends on which one that they're playing to hit you with. But, uh, Congrade, if you open up with him, you can pretty much activate his effect in hand to set him down on, uh, the field. And then, say, like, your turn comes around and he's still on your board and you flip him face up, you just get to pop two cards on the field for free. I play... Two Gigantes, either A for an extender for my Synchro plays, or B to be able to use to search out pieces I need to continue on with my Emancipator plays by going into Gala Granite. Uh, two Century Soldier of Stone. It's kind of a net card in this deck. I'm kind of feeling it, kind of not. Uh, my main reason for playing them in here is for playing the uh, Nat Beast. So that way I can have the spell negation. But if all your monsters you control are rock monsters, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. And I believe it is a hard once per turn. Uh, I play a small little Kokimaru lineup uh, with Kokimaru Overload. Whenever your opponent would summon a monster, you can just tribute to negate the summon and then destroy it. One Kokimaru wall uh, just to tribute it off and you know negate spells. And then I play three Guardian. Guardian is you can tribute him off as a quickie and negate the activation of a monster effect. Also, during the end phase for all the Kokimarus, you either have to reveal a Kokimaru uh, core or a rock monster on end phase to keep them on field. And finishing off with our uh, monster lineup, we have the one Nibiru. Uh, I personally play the one because it's easily searchable off the Gala Granite. So if you're going first and you feel like you're going to need it in game two, you can search it out. And uh, I also, the main reason I play one is because I don't feel like bricking on it in a sense. If you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, continuing on with the spells, I play two Emancipator 
lab to it. So lab to it's a pretty nice card that I don't see a lot of people use for emancipators, but I personally like it. Being able to give all my rock monsters an extra 500 attack and defense, and once per turn I can take five emancipator cards from my deck and put them on top of my deck in any order. One emancipator friends being able to excavate and then uh, add one of the rock monsters that you excavate equal to the I think it's fuck. Yeah, excavate the top cards of your deck equal to the number of rock monsters you control plus five. And if you do add one of your excavated rock monsters with level equal to or lower than the number of excavated cards. And then you place the remaining top uh, on the bottom of your deck. And then for the rest of this turn, I cannot special summon anything but rock monsters. Which you guys aren't really going to care about because pretty much the whole deck is freaking rocks. One Emancipator Sign being able to also... Uh, act as a monster reborn for your tuners in your graveyard and then being able to stack your deck if it's an emancipator monster Which uh, say for example, uh, you got seeker in graveyard you didn't activate seeker you special summon out seeker You take drag eye from your deck put them on top activate drag eye Excavate five well one of your cards that you excavated is the drag eye that you placed on top so you get to special summon him and draw a card uh, for Staple, one Monster Reborn, one Mind Control, one Dark Ruler No More, Monster Reborn is self-explanatory, Mind Control to use my opponent's monster for like Synchro material if I need to or Link material, Dark Ruler No More just to say screw you to all of those big body players I like to play those combo decks. And then to finish off the spells, the one reasoning, because the deck pretty much has a wide fluctuation of levels, so it's going to be kind of hard for your opponent to actually figure it out and hit it where it's going to count. Two Emancipator Relief, being able to tribute any Emancipator monster and then destroy cards on your opponent's side of the field, plus one. And then one Emancipator Resonance, just being able to have the monster effect negation as long as you control an Emancipator Synchro monster is pretty solid in my opinion. Going into the extra deck for the Emancipators, we play two Raptite. Uh, Raptite I see more of a extender card, being able to excavate five and then just special summon a level four or level rock monster. So with that being said, that also means you can special summon out your tuners, like your researchers, analyzers, and seekers off of this thing to keep on going. Uh, to Leonite, Leonite is one of those cards that you kind of want to just like hold on to and wait on if you want to use it. Because uh, you can excavate five cards, but you add an Emancipator card from your excavation to your hand. Uh, one of my favorites, again, Dragite, being able to excavate five and then bounce cards back from your opponent's field to the hand equal to the amount of uh, rock monsters you excavate. And then for the rest of the synchros, we play one Formula Synchron, one Nat Beast Formula Synchron being able to draw the card off of it and then synchro summon on your opponent's turn. The Nat Beast being able to send the top two cards of your deck to negate a spell. And then Nat Beast Sparkion being able to banish two cards from your graveyard to negate the activation of traps. Uh, one Goyo, just so that way whenever you destroy an opponent's monster by battle using this card, you can take control of it instead. Or is it Special Summon it? I think it's Special Summons. Um, one Crystal Wing just to have the monster negation on on the field and to also have an attack gain against your opponent so that we can push for more damage. Uh, one Digesto Emerald because, I mean, you burn through a lot of your resources in the deck so you want to recycle them back and, well, since you're recycling, you might as well draw a card. One Gala Granite, like I described earlier, it can also help... Uh, Search out your Nibiru if you feel like it's going to be necessary, or your tuners for extensions. For the links, I play the one Halqua Fibrax because, again, it's an extension card you need, and plus, it's also pretty nice being able to synchro summon in 
to either your crystal wing or your drag guide on your opponent's turn. And then finishing off the extra deck, uh, one Boral Load. Uh, I go in between Boral Load and Boral Sword for the deck, honestly. But uh, there's been occasions where a Link 4 play has actually came up. And I feel like Boral Load is honestly one of the best options for it. So, anyway guys, that's the Emancipator deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more deck profiles, more duels, all that. Uh, also hit the notification bell so that way you know when all that stuff is going down. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. And as usual, this is Red from Metagang. We'll catch you later. Like and subscribe to Metagang. Hit the bell icon. Looking up on that show, but the light you give you.